Hello, welcome back. In my last video, I went through all the reasons why you might not want to take out the tax-free cash from your pension fund. But there are some very good reasons why it might be the right thing for you to do, and that's the subject of this video today. Hi, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Diane, and I'm a qualified money coach who empowers people to achieve their money and ultimately life goals. Now, the first reason to take out the 25% tax-free lump sum from your pension fund is because you need the cash. Now, a good and obvious and perhaps the most usual reason that people do this is because they are entering retirement with a mortgage. And so a good reason to take the cash is because you don't want the hassle and burden of having a mortgage during retirement and you use that tax-free cash to clear it. Or maybe you had something in mind that by comparison might seem rather frivolous, such as a big round-the-world holiday at the start of your retirement nothing wrong with that, you've worked all your life, you deserve it. Now with some DB, also more commonly known as final salary schemes, you have the option to take out some tax-free cash at the start of the pension in exchange for a lower regular amount. Now why on earth might you want to do that? This one is not for the faint-hearted, but you might want to take out the tax-free cash from your DB pension and invest it somewhere else where you believe that you will get a better return as opposed to receiving the full regular amount. You are confident with what you can do with that tax-free cash that will give you an overall bigger income as opposed to the total fixed regular income that you'll get from your DB pension. This is of course a very risky thing to do and bigger returns as compared with your full final salary pension are absolutely not guaranteed. But if that's something that you have the appetite for, then that's a reason to take out the tax-free cash from a DB fund. And given that annuity rates are currently at 15-year highs, then you could consider taking that tax-free cash and buying an annuity with it so that you have a total guaranteed income that is perhaps bigger than your existing DB pension. Now the third reason to take the tax-free cash is if your sole income in retirement is from your DC pension fund. Because if you are taking all of your income from your pension fund and you find that you need to go into a higher tax band, this might mean that you are draining your pension fund, you are taking money from that pension fund much faster than you had anticipated. Whereas if you take that tax-free cash out of your pension fund and invest it in a tax-free wrapper within a stocks and shares ISA, that means that that money will be growing as well, albeit with the ups and downs of the stock market as per your pension fund. But the point is that tax-free cash is within a tax-free wrapper so that you can minimize as much as possible your income tax liability and therefore not take as much from your pension fund and make it last much longer than it would have if you were taking all your income from it. Now this is all related to the principle of stacking your regular income in the most tax efficient way. If you're not sure about how to do that, then I highly recommend you use the guide planner that I've linked to in the description. Now the fourth reason for taking out the tax-free cash used to be in relation to the lifetime allowance. There is no longer a penalty for exceeding the lifetime allowance, However, the Labour Party have said that if they get into power next year, they will immediately reinstate the LTA. So because of this uncertainty around the future of the lifetime allowance, it's worth bearing this reason in mind. And of course, assuming that a Labour government do reinstate the lifetime allowance, we have no idea right now whether they will reinstate it as it was or come up with a lower or higher threshold. We just don't know. This makes planning ahead very difficult. If, for example, you're 73 right now, and we can assume that the LTA test will apply at the age of 75 again. This flip-flopping and tinkering around with pension rules is so unhelpful for planning for your future. So in the meantime, if you do have the very good problem of being close to the LTA threshold, then you have to bear this in mind that a good reason to take out the tax-free cash would be if you would exceed a future imposition of the LTA. If you have a DB pension, that will usually continue to pay out to your spouse if you die first, albeit at a reduced rate. But then when they die, the pension also dies. You cannot bequeath your DB pension fund to your children. So a way around this would be to take out the 25% tax-free cash from your DB fund and hope that you live for another seven years 
and then your children can inherit it tax free. But even if unfortunately you don't live for that long, you're still able to leave your children or loved ones something as opposed to nothing. Now the reason it's completely reversed with a DC pension fund, which is what I covered in the last video, the reasons not to take out the tax free cash, there's a link in the description, do go and watch that after you've watched this one. Because leaving your money within a DC pension fund means that it's not subject to inheritance tax, which is a good reason not to take out the tax-free cash. But that's of course the trade-off you're making between a DB and a DC fund if you are interested in leaving as much money to your loved ones as possible as opposed to spending and blowing it all yourself. So in conclusion, as you can see what I've covered over the course of these two videos, and particularly the last point there that I've touched upon with respect to inheritance tax, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to taking that tax-free cash. If anyone is telling you that there is a definitive right or wrong perfect answer, then they're wrong. The decision that you make with respect to your pension in general, and particularly the tax-free cash, is unique to you and your specific circumstances and your wishes for your retirement. It's the same with everything when it comes to personal finance. That's the point. It's personal and unique to you. So don't forget that. This is a complex subject, so I hope that you found this information useful and most importantly, clear and easy to understand. Please let me know in the comments. But if this is all a bit too complicated and you want to go back to learning about the very basics of UK pensions, then watch this video next. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hoi va